Oh, no. <laughs> you should have eaten big before we go on camera. Whoops. <laughs> Let's spin the wheel of how much have we eaten. Question, 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 question. <laughs> because most people who teach are full of crap, um, frankly. I'm serious, right? Okay. Like most people in finance, like, oh, I can teach you to be a millionaire. Yeah, yeah. right. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't you just do it? So most teachers are those who can't do. Everyone, we are back from the break and we're here seated in front of Tim Sykes, who is a trader, teacher, and philanthropist who have created other millionaires around the globe. How are you doing? I'm doing Welcome great. to Dubai. Thanks for having me. I wanted to ask, first and foremost, how long have you been in the city for? And is this like your um, first time here? I've been here for a week. Uh, okay. It's like my third trip, but this okay. is like my most extensive trip. And Dubai has grown so much in just the past few years. It's actually exactly. amazing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. What brings you to Dubai? Just celebrating these students. They're, they have a big milestone. We needed to celebrate. So I, I can't wait to get to that later. Yeah. We also have their two students. Sorry, what was your names again? Hari. Hari. And Kyle. And Kyle. Hari and Kyle. Pronunciation might maybe a bit off for that one. But they're going to be joining us a little towards the end. But yes, yeah, so I wanted to ask, um, obviously, I've, I've, I've seen your interview with Steve Harvey. And I was surprised at the story that you told him about, obviously, how much was the amount that was given to you by your parents that you flipped to a couple thousand? Yeah, so it was like roughly 12 grand turned into nearly 2 million before I graduated college. So Insane. it was crazy. Insane. Could yeah. you tell everybody about that and how you got that head start? Basically yeah, I mean, I was just trading thousands of stocks. So I would take night classes uh, throughout college to trade during the day. And I'm just trading a lot of volatile, low price stocks. Um, holding them for a few hours or a few days, trying to take advantage of the volatility, losing sometimes, but my gains were bigger than my losses and grew it pretty nicely. Amazing. And now you obviously teach people. Yeah. Um, what brought that upon? What made you want to go from, okay, I've made all this money now. Yeah. Um, like what, what led you to want to become a teacher? Um, I never had a teacher, so I knew how hard it was in the beginning. Um, even though I did well, I also lost a lot at one point. I lost over $500,000 just due to lack of discipline, due to lack of mentorship. So I said, you know what, let me try to teach because most people who teach are full of crap. Um, frankly, I'm serious, right? Okay. Like most people in finance, like, oh, I can teach you to be a millionaire. Yeah, yeah, right. Why wouldn't Why wouldn't you just do it? So most teachers are those who can't do. And I was like, well, I actually have done, and I think I can continue. But let me try to pass this down. So, what was your kind of going back? What was your history with with your finances? Like, I mean. It's hard to imagine you were how old, 18 years old when you started teaching yourself about stocks? I yeah, I was 18, 19, um, kind of crazy 19 year old, 20 year old, 21 year old, 22 year old, way too much money, way too cocky, <laughs> due for a fall. Okay. Um, but now a lot of my students are like 18, 19, 20, 21. So. Because, exactly, because usually you'd have the 18, 19, 20 year olds yeah. who would have the money, but then the, it, it, it wouldn't be multiplied the way that you did, right? The yeah. first thing you'd think of at that age range is, how fast can I spend this? Yeah, I mean, so I'm trying to teach like responsible trading techniques, even though like trading is very, you know, speculative, 90% yeah. of traders lose. So I'm trying to keep them in the game, keep them um, trading responsibly. And frankly, we're all benefiting from a hot market over the past year. Amazing. Okay, yeah, so I, going, going to that actually. So how do you think, do you think the pandemic has affected the market obviously in any yeah. way, shape or form? How's that? Tell us more about so it. So a lot of people are at home. A lot of people are looking for new ways of generating income. Right. So the trading game has just exploded, especially with low price um, brokers or free brokers like Robinhood. So now everyone can trade. Also in America, we have a lot of stimulus checks being handed out. I don't recommend putting that into the market, but people do that. Um, so you just have a lot of you know, liquidity and that just creates a lot of speculative bubbles. Amazing, okay. And okay, on that note as well, obviously I feel like you've maybe seen the blow up on uh, TikTok. Yeah. All these people that are going into stocks, this yeah. 15, 16 year olds yeah. like, who can't wait to turn 18, yeah. download Robinhood. And yeah. what do you think of those, um, what do you think of that whole thing right I now? mean, it comes with every bubble. Everyone thinks that it's gonna be so easy, but it really mm. never is. Um, during the bubble, you learn actually a lot of the wrong lessons. Like you could have just bought Tesla and held, you could have just bought Bitcoin and held and you think that you're a genius. But then mm. when the bubble starts to pop or when it ends, everything changes and then those people don't look so smart. Interesting. And so what are the differences you think um, with actually going to train from somebody who's had the experience versus 
trying to learn yeah. on your own um, on the internet. Yeah, I mean, I'm just more conservative. Um, a lot of the times I sell too quickly, I cut losses very quickly. Rule mm -hmm. number one is always cut losses quickly. So I have lots of small losses. Right. And if you're like a new trader or new investor, you're like, look at this guy, he has so many small losses but I'm protecting against a giant loss. So okay. the key is learning to be responsible. And this is tough when you're trading. Again, this is like a very degenerative uh, industry yeah. with a lot of dangers. Um, so I'm trying to you know, get my students through those pitfalls or that's, potential pitfalls. That, that's, that's actually a really good advantage that you mentioned there because I feel like it is very one-sided what you're seeing on the internet where like you said, it's like, okay, this is easy, exactly. Hold, to your, hold on to your Bitcoin, leave it for... But I mean, there's still strategy with everything at the end of the day, right? Yeah, I mean, everyone also likes to only talk about their winners. You don't show your losses. So for me, I show all my trades. Like, you know, you can see all my trades over 20 plus years. I have a lot of losses, but they're small, they're contained. So I'm not embarrassed to show my losses because again, my gains are bigger than my losses. So Amazing. if you're real, you have an advantage. There's so many fakers and they just got lucky on one or two big plays. That's not exactly skill. That's going to lead to a downfall eventually. Fair. Um, any personal struggles that you actually remember in terms of uh, trading in the last 20 years? Yeah. I mean, when I lost 500,000 plus, I was a hedge fund manager. Um, it really wrecked me. I became like a heavy drinker. The press <laughs> spread it everywhere. And it was a great lesson. It made me a more responsible trader and a better teacher. Um, because now I don't bet that big anymore. I won't have that same size risk like I used to. Yeah. So losses are not the end of the world if you can come back from them. And now, frankly, that was one of the best things ever for me. That's incredible. I also really wanted to talk about, obviously not, all of this is amazing. Everything that you've done for yourself and how you've helped train so many people um, to reach the level that they're at. But also you do a lot of really great things for for humankind. I want you to talk about your philanthropic endeavors. Yes. That was really interesting. So I donate all my trading profits to charity these days. Um, wow. I sold all my cars, donated the profits to charity. Like I like to donate. So in just the past three and a half years, my charity has donated six and a half million dollars now um, to building schools, helping animals. Uh, we did a documentary on coral reefs, documentary on rhino. Um, we have a pretty good engagement. It's called Karma Gala. Um, Kamagawa, yes, guys. Yeah, so we're trying to spread awareness, build schools everywhere. 75 schools built so far, but the goal is to build a thousand plus. So uh, when did this kind of start? What, what brought you to, to, to Costa? To yeah, I mean, I've always been traveling all throughout this journey. I just love to travel, but there's only so many like luxury pools and pina coladas that you can have before you start saying, wait a minute, like what more is there? Um, so I went to Bali a lot and started helping like the locals. They needed a lot of education. Um, started going to Cambodia. Going to third world countries really opens your mind. Um, and when it's safe, I encourage everyone to do that. It gives you better perspective. You're so much more grateful for every little thing in the first world. And you see how far money can go. Like I can build a school in Bali for $25,000, $35,000, changes the lives of hundreds of children. I mean, that's a good, that's a good deal. That's what, that's what I really, that's what I thought, oh my God, this is something that we really need to highlight because you see a lot of people who, uh, who do the same thing that you do minus what you do for, uh, obviously for the animals, for the reef, for, for humans. And I think that's very, very admirable. So thanks. I mean, you just find what like motivates you, right? Yeah. Like before I, I used to just like to travel and I like luxury stuff and there's nothing wrong with that, but I kind of got over that and yeah. you have to find and like create new goals and new challenges for yourself. Exactly. Cause so. people seem to think that like, okay, me making this much money would be the end goal yeah. and I will attain some sort of um, happiness, inner, yeah. inner, inner joy, but. No, there's a lot of depressed, like wealthy people and they're very confused. They're like, I got everything right. I got wealthy. Why am I still not happy? Yeah. Because it's not just about the money. What are you doing with that money? You know, if you're just spending it on ridiculous toys, like that's not gonna fulfill you. Right. Frankly, I love my toys in the beginning. Uh, it was my childhood dream to buy all these cars, but eventually they got old. They lost their adrenaline rush. Now I get a great rush when I visit a new community with a new school and thinking about how these children now have an opportunity in life. And how beautiful that rush is. Yeah. So now you're And they hug me. They, they always hug. It's like, it was like the cutest Have you sense. been to the Philippines? Oh uh, yeah. So we yeah. have two medical centers there and I love the Philippines. Amazing. Whereabouts? Um, it, all over the place, but Coron. Um, Coron. Oh, I'm, uh, cause I'm half Filipino. Oh, my nice. mom actually lives in Coron. Oh, cool. So nice. That's, that's so we were all Thank over. You. So my partner on Karma Gala, um, it used to be the Timothy Sykes Foundation, but I changed the name. I don't need any more. I have enough ego. Um, so we changed it to Karma Gawa and Gawa in the Tagalog language. Means, Gawa, yeah, to do. To do or to make. Oh, that's so we're making good karma. Karma Gawa. That's it. That's how it came through. Oh. My partner is Matabad, is bad boy on Instagram. He's from Manila. He grew up 
um, very impoverished, and now you know we're the helping more you change know. it. Yeah. Well, that's incredible. So okay, so you work from all around the world. I saw you guys' picture. Yeah. I think that you guys were included, right? Yeah. Burj Al Arab School, if, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, the Burj Al Arab School. They've got their laptops. Yeah. They're living the life. Um, There's good Wi-Fi there too. Amazing. I'm very happy. You know what? We love Dubai for that. Yeah. Never without fail. Without I'm loving fail, Dubai's Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. That should be a new. That's a new company right there. Love in Dubai Wi-Fi. Boom. We're creating things right here. Do it to Salah, hit him up. Anyway, 100%. Um, so you obviously travel all around the world with just your laptop and your phone in hand yeah. and, and you're able to work. Um, what are, I'm just going to ask, what are the top three countries that you like to work from and why? Um, I love Dubai. I'm not going to lie. You have to say that. No, no, but I really do. Like you, yeah? there's so much here. You know, it's like, I wish I had more time. I'm going to come back again. Um, But I love Italy. I love Greece. I love South Africa. I love the Philippines. I love Japan. I love it all. You can't. No, it's it's not a top three thing. Did you say three? Yeah, Yeah. I said three. He's like, nope. Nope. I think I multiplied it. I'm an overachiever. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Um, But But I need good Wi-Fi. This is the thing, right? So like, I like going to Cambodia. I like building the schools. I like visiting, but I can't work from there. Okay. The Wi-Fi just isn't that great. Yeah, I'm so on that Cambodia. note, okay, other than Cam- Cambodia, yeah. what are the other places with really crap Wi-Fi? Uh, Kenya is not that great. Uh, Guatemala's hit uh, or miss. Um, there's a lot of countries. But again, like they're, they're trying to improve, yeah. but Dubai, you guys nailed it. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Okay, on that note as well, you've been here three times, yeah. Dubai. You just had Beit Maryam. Before they came in, they're like, okay, we had Beit Maryam. Amazing. My friend, the hungry tourist, recommended that. Okay? The and we just, tourist. Yeah, we just ate everything. Shout out. You to should you. have the hungry tourist on all about restaurants. He's the we'll most probably, knowledge. We'll He's getting in tonight. I'll, I'll introduce you. Yes, He's do amazing. That. We we'll yeah. love that. Yeah. But um, so, what have you tried? Have you tried any local delicacies? Like delicacies we haven't here? really had that much time. Like, oh. we have this crazy schedule. I'm celebrating with these guys. Huddy's barely awake just because, like, you know, we've been celebrating so hard. Look at him wearing his glasses. You guys are about to see him in a bit. He thinks he's Bono, you know, but like, he's not. But like, we've had this crazy schedule. This was our first kind of local cuisine and it was amazing. All right. Save the best for last. We were just like doing a lot of hotel food, but the Burj has amazing food too. So. The Burj, okay. Yeah, French toast I haven't is tried, amazing. but yeah, that, that's actually, French I'm going to keep a note of that. The French toast. Yeah. Okay, cool. On that note, I before I want to bring these two guys on, I wanted to know um, what it, what was it you guys were celebrating? Tell everybody kind of, actually, no, let's have you on. Yeah, what you have them brag on, about guys. themselves. How are you? Good, how are you? Holly, with his shades, a mood. What's up, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> so introduce yourselves and how you came across him. So what's up, I'm uh, Mike Huddy. Um, I was in college and his message really spoke to me back in college. He kind of did it himself and he was talking about traveling the world, you know, being free and being able to live that kind of lifestyle. And I had already worked for a job. I didn't really want to do that going forward. So I figured while in college, I might as well put all my time and effort into doing this. Um, I forgot the second part of the question. <laughs> that, that was it. How'd you, how'd you come across him? So what was it through social media? Yeah, a lot of it social media. Like Google really just, you know, found, it was his message that he promoted that spoke to me. There were some other people online that I could have gone with, but the way that he talked about his efforts and, and how he presented himself, that spoke to me. Yeah, because um, if you notice, there are a lot, right? Even today, like if I were to try to get into it, which she and I actually discuss a lot. Um, I just we, had my first female millionaire student too. More females should get into this. Cut to me. You yeah. Know, hitting you up Mariana is 20 years old and she just became a millionaire just a few weeks ago. Messages her. Hey girl, you want to help lunch? <laughs> right? I'll, I'll introduce you guys. Oh my God. I'll introduce she you to Dubai, everybody. But... She's in New Hampshire. Oh, okay. <laughs> in America. Oh, you can't introduce <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it'll be a long distance. It'll be a Zoom call. Yeah. But basically, you see a lot of these people on Instagram, and it's like mm, there's a bit of a feeling. Didn't you get when maybe when you're scrolling past these people, and you're like, well, who do I trust? Like, is it dodgy? Is it real? Right? But yeah. Especially if you've had no previous knowledge of it. Yeah. So that's really this is why I show every single trade, my gains, my losses, like all I transparent. Have, yeah, like a big chapter in my book is all about the losses and the defeat, and you know how it really stunk, but. It became very popular just talking about losses because people don't want to talk about it. Yeah, I have a big enough ego. I can take it. I can take like the hits, like put a little snake on my, you know, profile. Who cares? Yeah. Whatever. Really Give me the little L. Like, right? Yeah, I get these little <laughs> He's L ready comments. for it at this point. Basically. Well, I get in fights with like rappers. They steal. I used to post like Ooh. photos of cash and like rappers, like they don't make that much money. So they would steal my cash photos. And I said, you know, <gasps> poor rappers, I'll teach you to trade in the stock market. Then you won't have to be broke anymore. Yeah. So. Ah! 
the exposure. I love it. So, and then uh, like the rappers would come after me and like they would tell their friends to like attack me and I would get all the little L's in the snakes and then I got 300,000 followers. And I was like, thank you, broke rapper. You're useful you for something. You just did me a favor. Yeah, you're broke useful rapper. for once in, in your life. It's oh amazing. Oh my God. Anybody can be useful no matter how broke you are. That's that's That gives us hope. That gives us hope. <laughs> but on to you. So how did you come across him? Uh, I was in college uh, as an engineering major, knowing I didn't want to be an engineer. Uh, but I didn't know what I want to switch to. And so I just kind of went on a little like self-discovery journey of like what industry I might get into. And I eventually found like the stock market. And there was a little like side like caution of like, don't go into penny stocks. They're mm. sketchy. They're scary. So I just Google penny stocks. And like the first thing that comes up is, is It made you want to get into it more. Yeah. I was like, why? Why? Whoa, like, whoa, tell me what to do. Whoa, yeah. so dangerous. And then Tim's like the, one of the first guys that came up. And, and of course, at first, like you said, I was like, who's this guy? Why yeah. would he want to teach me? But then back to what Tim said, it's like, there's so many videos, every trade's posted, you know, at some point after like a couple weeks, I was looking at all through it. Like this, how can you be fake with so much stuff? Exactly. You know? And, so that's and at the end up. of the day, everything in life is a risk, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's like, what an amazing risk you guys took yeah, on and right. like look at how it but it's just out. good to be real like in exactly. an industry full of fakes like that's my whole secret i'm not the best trader i'm not like amazing but i show everything yeah. and i can you know speed up a learning curve because i've been doing this for 20 plus years now. amazing yeah. so what are you guys celebrating now with with, with these two lovely top so each of these guys just passed a million dollars in trading profits Amazing. He's actually at 1.7 million. We didn't get a chance to celebrate just due to what's going on in the world. He's oh at 1.3 million. Oh my god! So it's good. Incredible. It's a good start. Yeah. That's incredible. How do you guys feel? Uh, it's pretty. It's like the kind of freedom and knowing, you know, I'm gonna do anything stupid. I'll uh, I'll be okay for the most of my life. You know. And wait, yeah. and like, how long did this whole process take? Like, how, uh, how do you reach to the, like, in, this point? In June this year, it'll be five years. So officially starting to learn. So. But Slow and steady wins the race. But he was prepared yeah. for the hot market. So we're yeah. all benefiting from this hot market. Like yeah. the first year he didn't make anything. You know, you've been a student for how many years? Five years. Five years. So it's a process. Now with the hot market, they've been preparing through slow markets. So you just have to be prepared for the opportunity. And most people are unprepared. That's the problem. Exactly. Most people are starting now and they're like, okay, how do I get into this? But they didn't put in the one, two, three, four years ahead of time. Yeah. So I'm always trying to get people educated immediately. Like if you ever have a question like, when should I start? Start learning now. Because you don't know when the next hot market, the next bubble is going to be. And everyone's playing catch up. Exactly. Yeah. What are the, some of the qualities that you think these two stu lovely students of yours possess that kind of led them to the success and the, the, the amazing achievement that they were able to? Yeah, they're both dedicated, you know, very patient uh, with their learning. Like I said, like they didn't do much or really anything for the first year. And most people want like quick money, right? Because that's like maybe the learning year. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. It, even two years, even three years. Yeah. Like you have to think of it like, okay, college, you know, or like becoming a doctor, Actually, like yeah. you put it in a decade. You don't necessarily have to spend like six figures or a decade. I mean, I teach some pretty degenerate people and they still get it like within five or six years. So, but you still have to put in that time. Like you can't do this in like five days or five weeks or even five months. Um, there are a lot of nuances and in the smallest details that usually leads to the most success. Incredible. Congrats to you both. Thank you. Um, my final question yeah. for you, Tim, would be what's your advice to, like you said, all the people who are looking into obviously going into this? Yeah, just be careful and, and don't expect like quick riches. Like we've had a hot market. So everyone's kind of spoiled right now, but that's not necessarily going to last. The most success that you'll have is over five years, 10 years, 20 years. So what can you do today, this week, this month to put yourself in a better position in the future? And that's how you have to think about it. It's tough because you have to sacrifice time right now and yeah. a lot of effort, but you set yourself up and then everything compounds. Knowledge compounds, profits compound, your expertise compounds over time. So by year five, year seven, like you guys like looking back compared now compared to the beginning like it's oh, like it's night and day world. because you have so many rules so many examples of made trades missed trades wins yeah. losses and it's a whole education you can't cheat the system really everyone wants like real money right away without education but you need education first that is so true thank yeah. you so so much no, it's we've my learned pleasure. so much yeah. and uh, we can't wait for you to be back in dubai and for you guys also for sure. i hope you enjoy you've got what one day left that's about it yeah They've got a day left, so we bid you guys. We've got a crazy them. night planned. Oh, yeah, yeah, a little bit. I'll be watching your stories. Ah, <laughs> but cool. thank you so much, Tim. You guys, thank you for tuning in. We'll catch up with you guys tomorrow, same time, same place. Actually, not the same time. We started in the in the morning, so today is a, a bit of a late one. So 9 a.m. every single day, 11 daily. Thank you. Bye bye.